In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for peace and justice, especially for Christians who are persecuted in many countries. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. May we seek our wisdom. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So tonight we begin, we enter, strictly speaking, in logic. Huh? We try to understand how we think. Huh? How we think. And um, the beginning of knowledge huh, uh, starts from our sense experience. If you never, if you never saw a thing, an animal or a plant, you cannot have an idea of what is that. Huh? I say to see, but to hear about also. Huh? Okay? So <coughs> I go to the text here. Huh? The human uh, being knowledge of reality. Hmm? It is a fact that man knows the material world, both in a sensible, singular way, both uh, we know things through their See, uh, because they are material things, which are material, they are sensible and they are singular. Well, here, sensible, you have to think about the meaning, the technical meaning in philosophy. That means more for word, able, huh? able to be known by our senses, huh? sensible, hearing, not common sense, <laughs> but uh, to be able to be known by our senses. As we will see in the future, intelligible means able to be known by our intellect. Huh? So that's the meaning. Sensible here has a, a particular uh, meaning. Huh? In, in, in the common language, sensible is a common sense. Huh? But here, if you go to uh, Miriam Webster, you will find that. Huh? In Miriam Webster, they speak about that meaning also. But it's not the current meaning. Now, sensible means able to be known by my senses. And what can be known by my senses is the material object, huh? the material world. And when I see something, I listen to something, that something is singular. Hmm? This cat. You never saw a cat in, in, in general. Hmm? You see, this cat, that cat. Huh? Now, nobody ever saw a, a dog. We see this dog. Okay, we say a dog. But the dog I saw. Hmm? That means every experience is sensible and singular. And that is the starting point of our knowledge. We know through our senses. Our senses are the gateways, huh? the door, the windows, huh? to enter, to allow the, the external world to enter our mind. They pass through our senses. And so in this essence, uh, and essential, abstract and universal. Well, that means when we speak about, for example, a cat. My cat, your cat, this cat, okay? But you realize that you go everywhere in the world and you see, ah, oh, that is a cat, that is a cat. Finally, you have, and you speak with people, and they speak about cat. So you can, you are not limited only to this cat or this cat. You have the idea of what is a cat in general. And you have the intelligible, and universal concept. Huh? You have a concept which is abstract and universal. That means we have idea. We have an idea of what is a cat. We have an idea of what is a, uh, what is a, a camel. Even you never went, you never went to uh, to uh, Arabi or Israel. You, know, you see what is a camel. I was in, in 2004, I was in 
Okay, this is near Jerusalem, and we went to the desert Negev, well, the Negev, south of Jerusalem. And I saw on the, on the street a sign like that, you know? <laughs> that means, be careful here, cross, camel crossing, <laughs> you know? Camel crossing. I have an idea why I was able to recognize that sign, because I have an idea that there's a camel, there's a drama there. You know? So our idea, in fact, are what we know about our knowledge is two levels. We have a sense, a sense knowledge, sense knowledge, and we have an intellectual knowledge. The problem is, ah, we pass from one to the other. <laughs> but it is a fact. Huh? You can speak uh, with many people about many things. Uh, many, you have an idea of what is a thing. If you don't know what is a thing, you go to the dictionary, and the dictionary will give you uh, the content, the idea of what is the thing. Okay? Uh, I could not do it, uh, uh, paragraph two. The steps. Huh? How we pass from sense experience to concept, huh? to the idea. Huh? That is the idea, concept. Huh? How we pass from one to the other. In fact, it is the explanation of knowledge. But well, tonight I will give you a synthesis of that theory. And in uh, January, no, in, no in November, we will study that in more systematic way. Okay? So there will be a repetition, but you know, repetition is the mother of learning. Huh? <laughs> okay. Well, when you see a thing, Remember when you were uh, six years old, nine years old, and you went in the forest, or you went in the farm, or you went to the zoo, and you saw an animal for the first time. What you said to your father? Oh, what is that? What? <laughs> that means we try to know the nature of that. To have an idea of that. You see? You experiment an animal with a patch on uh, uh, and special animal. We don't see that in, in, in Connecticut. So you, you say, what is that? And your father say, that is a kangaroo. Kangaroo. And now <coughs> you have a knife. So the first thing, when you ask the question, what? You try to find a name, to give a name to the thing, to the reality. And to give a name is very important. Remember in the Genesis, that is, is it is a parenthesis. <laughs> God gave to man the dominion about, on, over the creation. No? And what that is say? Give a name. Uh, give a name. You remember when you were young, you play outside with all your friends, no? boy and girl, you have fun. And your mother opened the door and said, Mary, John, Jane, come here. It's time to die to, for dinner. The other guy did not continue to work, to, to play. But because you were obedient, because you recognize your name, you enter. You know? Your mother has a power on you because she knows your name. You have a dog? You have a dog? Yes. Dog, a, a name? Yes. What is his name? Tia. Tia, okay. So if there are 10 dogs here, and you say, Tia, come here, who will come? Yeah. Tia. So when we give a name, you have a master on that. It is so true that in the Bible, the Israelite Israel, 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 never use the name of God. When they see the tetragram, huh? the, the tetragram, something like that, they don't remember, yeah. Wait, huh? They say Adonai, they say the Lord, they never see God, they never see heaven. Because to name God is to have a power on God. Only God has a power, so they never say the word. And in French, in the, the, the new translation of Jerusalem Bible, before 
They translated Yahweh, huh? Yahweh, Yahweh, but now they changed, they say the Lord, by respect for the Jews. Because the Jews never used the word Yahweh. They write it, they never tell it. Because a name is already a power. So when you are able to give a, give a name to a plant, give a name to a dog, give a name to a person, it is a kind of dominion, huh? a kind of power. It is the first step, the first step, but it's not enough. Um, maybe I will, I, you know, I am a dual teacher, I, I repeat many times. So if forgive me, if I repeat. Maybe I thought that when I, the first year I was in Africa, 1971, in, I was supervising an, an, an exam, exam three hours, four hours, because in those countries, it is not a, make a big speech shows and they have to write pages and pages. So I was supervising and during the examination I was reading magazine or something, say my rosary or so on. <laughs> but it was very long. So, and, and a sister worked a nurse in the clinic in the of the mission, because it was a new big mission. She gave me an article a, a news week, a news week. And that, it was interesting for them because it was an article about Uganda. And with so many pictures, people, they were dying, they were no strength. And the question is, what, what kind of disease it is? Is that disease coming from monkeys, etc.? Many. At that time, in 1971, nobody knew what it was. But a few years after, we knew that it was AIDS. We were able to put a name. And when we have a name, what we identify, we can do what is that. And we can. Hi. You know the big problem with terrorists? We don't know them. During the last war, war two, it was easy to fight. Why? Because the German and the Russian and the American and Canadian, they have a suit, huh? military attire. But terrorists, they can be everywhere. Okay, so the main first step. Another way also to know what is a thing, it is to consider that thing with other things. We call that classification. Huh? In fact, it is the way scientific, scientists uh, uh, function. Huh? Um, it, we try to, 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 to distinguish the component of the thing. We compare with other things. Uh, Maritain, Jacques Maritain, who is a great neotomist, He was a layman, he was a Protestant, liberal, agnostic, he married uh, uh, Orthodox uh, Russian woman, Raisa, and he went to study in Germany biology. And he discovered St. Thomas through two French friends, Leon Blois and Peggy, Charles Peggy. And he, he recovered faith, he became, he became a Catholic, he was not a Catholic, he became a Catholic. And he discovered St. Thomas. He discovered Aristotle and St. Thomas because of those people here. Yeah. And he wrote books with Gilson, huh? Gilson, Etienne Gilson, who taught in Yale, and uh, Dondel, Marcel Dondel. Well, that's not important for the exam. Huh? They, 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 they express the thought of St. Thomas in modern words, in a new way. And we call them the neo Thomas. Instead of giving the Summa like that, nobody reads the Summa except some seminarian. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, don't be. We have the last of the Mohican to use the Summa. Huh? Uh, <laughs> I study in, in French, I study in Ottawa. Uh, I think we have one class with Sumo. All the rest was not good. So. But the same, what is important is the, the words of the idea. So those authors, Jacques Maritain, they try to give the thought of Aristotle and St. Thomas in a modern <coughs> language. Hmm? And he wrote a book, To Distingue pour Unir, and to distinguish in order to unite. 
That means I cannot know what is a thing. I, I, I'm not able to distinguish the thing from another, <laughs> you know, and to classify. That is uh, we, we, we do it in science, classification. And finally, uh, we, we, our way of uh, knowledge, our way of knowledge uh, is, I will say, there is two ways to knowledge, two ways. We can, see, we can know a thing directly. For example, I know you directly, you know me directly. Uh, that is intuitive, uh, intuitive knowledge. But we can know also through reasoning. For example, I asked you if you have a dog. You, you told me, yes. I know that. I know, it's a knowledge, that you have a dog. Why? Because you told me. That is demonstration, that is witness, you know. Did you ever see God? No. But you see the, the, the moon, the sun, the, uh, the, the star, the galaxies, and from the universe, you deduce the existence of God. So the, we have a direct knowledge. We call that intuition, huh? intuitive knowledge. But we, we can have also a deductive knowledge. The two way to know, uh, two way to, and we will come back on that. Huh? So for the moment, our way, the first way we know, it is not deductive. The first way we know is inductive, intuition, experience. How you can know, for example, the color red, the color blue, the color yellow, the yellow or orange, only through experience. And you understand why a blind man a difficulty to know what is blue, red, and yellow. He can know that only through analogy, <laughs> with vibration and color and, and water, etc. Okay. So sense experience. We see uh, the thing singularly uh, in their uni uh, unicity. Uh, this, this desk, this class, this bird, etc. Uh, and that we don't stay there, we go to a second level, and that level is the intellect, intellective level. Huh? It is there. so. How we can pass to that? And now take that. We have that chart. Huh? Take that. You don't have that? Huh? You don't have that? Yes. Okay, you have that. Okay. That is what made by a student, Father Iki. Maybe you know Father Iki? He is a former Baptist pastor and he became a Catholic priest and he is in Glastonbury. And when he followed my class, he put my. I have another presentation, but he did better than I. So he prepared that and very happy to use it. But well, if you look at that, here we have the synthesis uh, of the explanation how we, we know. First, we, there is the, the order of existence. And the order of existence, what do we have? We have singular, sensible reality. Oh, we saw that just before. Huh? Singular, sensible reality. We have a race. Race in Latin means thing. A thing. Realism. Huh? The current, philosophic current, which start from thing, from race, we call that a realism. Now, for example, St. Thomas, Aristotle are realists, Newtonists are realists. But they have Plato, St. Augustine, they are not realists. Because their knowledge does, does not start from the rest, it start from their mind. And we call that idealism. That means that knowledge is already in my mind. And when I have a sense experience, I recognize what is there. You know? it's, 
Knowledge for them is recognition. The problem is the explanation. So we come back on that. Huh? Uh, Plato explained that through metampsychosis. Uh, before another existence, I learned, now I know, and what I know corresponds to what I learned in my precedent existence. But for St. Augustine and, 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 uh, and uh, Descartes, who are Catholic, both of them practicing Catholic, that he cannot accept that. So if I have my, my idea, because God put this idea in my mind, you know, he is the one who put that in my mind. Because I must have a need, a source of knowledge. The source of knowledge can come from my body, my senses, or can come from my mind, my intellect. Okay? But for us, following the common sense, I think, I think our experience starts from sense experience. Well, they can't say I cannot trust my senses, but we can verify under the argument he gave. It is, you have a, a glass, you put a stick and the stick is broken. So you cannot trust your senses, but I know I can verify, explain for that. Huh? Because the, the density of the liquid is not the density of the air. Okay? So the speed of light is not the same. Well, I can do that. I invite you to be a realist. <laughs> As a scientist, I prefer to be a realist. Huh? Okay, so the source of my knowledge is singular material reality in time and space. Huh? That is the object. And that object, external object, is singular and is material and is in time and space. Okay? Now, how is it possible that the kangaroo, the lion, the elephant enter my, my mind, my mind, my mind? How is it possible? Without breaking my eyes. Does the elephant enter with the totality of his being? No. So what enters in my eyes is not material. It's a kind of immateriality. A kind of material. material. Uh, in fact, when you study Arctic, if you see here a man, then you will see a man here. Huh? No? That man is made with, uh, with uh, flesh and bones. And here it is not made, it is only an uh, image. So the thing come from the, the object is like an image, huh? a representation. Okay? So every senses, I have five external senses. Each one has a special object. For huh? example, my eyes are color, uh, my ear, sound, etc. Okay? And when I have a sensation, the sensation I have through my senses is proper to my senses. So I know the object uh, through my different senses. So if I have color, my eyes, my ear, my... You take an orange, for example. An orange, you see the color. You can taste, you can smell, you can touch huh, the orange. But every, uh, every sense by itself cannot communicate to the other. For example, your eye, your ear cannot say to your eye, you know, that is, now your ear is specialized to listen and your eye is specialized to see. How is it possible all that together allow me to see an orange? Because we have a power, an internal power, which coordinates the sensation. In that internal power, we call that huh, common sense, but common sense is not very good. We prefer uh, coordinating sense. Because common sense is another meaning. Huh? Common. Good. Okay. Coordinating. We have a, a sense which coordinates. And because of that, we can see, for example, the size of a thing, the, 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 the movement of a thing, and we can recognize. You look at the sky, you see a, a plane. Not only you see, you listen, but you have this, 
that can uh, an idea an uh, uh, image of the size and the movement you know all that okay that is common sense but the common sense is only coordinated and what you have from the object the external object entering your uh, your uh, your senses is in the imagination the imagination it is the faculty of receiving, concert, keeping, conserving, and modifying your images from outside. Now, to understand what happened between the object and the act of seeing and the subject. Okay. I will write another way. Subject, act. That pattern is probably the most important of all philosophy with predicate and subject, subject and predicate. Because all the activity of man are based on that. Every activity to see, no? to remember, to will, it is a subject. Who is the subject? I. In fact, there is only one subject, I. Because when you see you, you eat an apple, you is the subject. In fact, that you is an I. <laughs> In reality, there is only one subject, I. Okay. Well, anyway. So the subject, what is the word subject? Sub, under. Yaktum, to be placed, to be thrown. Huh? To be. So the subject is under. The subject is under what? Is under an act. He is supporting an act. For example, your eye is uh, the action of seeing is in the subject. Huh? The action of seeing is in the subject, your eye. Huh? But your act is receiving an object. In fact, we should read like Chinese. Huh? That's can <laughs> The subject, the act, and the object. But we write like that. But mentally, it is that. Subjectum is on the object, what is in front of me. Huh? Obstacle, it is an obstacle huh? in front of me. Opposition, huh? up, huh? in front of me. Opposition, that means he put up in front of me. Huh? Opposition. So, object. The object determines the act. For example, color determines the act of seeing. Does not determine the act of hearing. Sound determines the act of hearing. That means when I, I, I accomplish something, there must be an object. Imagine you go to Times Square and you, see, and you try that. You have fun. Huh? You go to Times Square. Stay like that and look at that. What happened? 100 people will be. And if they see the thing, what they will say? <laughs> Either you are sick or a comedian. Huh? Just for laugh. Huh? <laughs> In fact, it's not just for laugh. Huh? Everybody. <laughs> Why? Because if we look at something, we look at something. If you see something and other people see nothing, either you are a comedian or you are ready to go to the psychiatric hospital. <laughs> because it is an hallucination. Huh? You see something that not exists, hallucination. That means in our way of acting, seeing, there must be always an object. It's the reason why. I don't agree with the cut when you say I think, therefore I exist. I think something, I think about something. I cannot think purely, I think. What do you think? Ah, I think. No. What do you see? Ah, I see. What do you see? I see. If you see nothing, you don't see. So our senses, yeah, my, my knowledge is determined, is precise, by an object. 
object. Very important. Why? Because my knowledge is objective. Re alis reis. Reis, that means also object. We are so poor. <laughs> Nothing to write. Hey. Where is my chart? It is a big computer. I have nothing. <laughs> Can you take it? Thank you. Oh, no, that is a not a sin. Right there. Oh, yes, I have that, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go so far. I'm right? more <laughs> He will cut my salary because I use too much <laughs> So our, our knowledge is objective. That means my knowledge depends on the external world. I don't have my, the object of my knowledge within me. The object of my knowledge comes from outside. Excessively important. Why? Because it is here that philosopher Sibel. Those they are realist, realism or idealism. Because idealism, the source of their knowledge, comes from their mind. If it is their mind, it is the subject. It is subjective. Subject. My mind is the source of my knowledge. If your mind is the source of your knowledge, what will happen? In the mind, your, your, your mind is the source of your knowledge. My mind is the source of my knowledge. Are we necessarily the same? <laughs> so, the consequence of that for me, that first was rationalism. That means we try to explain everything to our reason. But our reason, each one has his own reason, no? So the consequence of that is relativism. And with relativism, you have utilitarianism, which is the philosophy of capitalism. Capitalism is here. Hmm? Mind your business, hmm? my business, and your business. Hmm? Okay. There is no universal truth. Here, a capacity for universal truth. For magisterium. Magisterium. To that mean a unique teaching. That is important for us. No? Our, that philosophy is important. So, okay. So, I, I know things through my senses. My senses are coordinated by my uh, uh, by my uh, coordinating sense and the image of that. Okay, another idea here I have to explain. The image of the, the thing does not enter. I see a, a, a bulldozer, a big bulldozer. The bulldozer does not enter. He enters, he does not enter. He enters under an aspect. It does not enter under another aspect. But to understand that, uh, Aristotle had a genius idea, genial idea. He has the idea that between material things, something is common and something is different. Something is common. And what is common to everything? He called that matter. And what is proper to everything, make it that different, he called that form. In Greek, ile and for morphe. That get the word highly morphism. Huh? Oh, thank you. Didn't help much. Oh. A great victory. <laughs> <a great victory. laughs> <Four> too. <laughs> Keep Thank you, it's better than nothing. Thank you. You know, we have not matter, but we have the form. We know it is a chalk, <laughs> but we have no matter of chalk. <laughs> Interesting. We have the knowledge, but 
the form, but unfortunately, the form is not incarnated in, in China. Okay. I give you an example. So here you have a desk. It is made with wood. You have here a pulpit. It is made with wood. You have an organ made with wood. A piano made with wood. Many things are made with wood. Okay? Wood, 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 wood. Is a, a desk, a table, a chair, a piano, the same thing? Are the same thing? No. They are different, but they are the same thing. They are made with wood. Wood is in every, everything. Huh? Uh, I mentioned you, but it's not the same. I cannot say. Uh, I go to the store, I want to, to, to buy a table, and they give me a bed. You see, yeah, you ask, yeah, they, a table is not a bed. Even both of them are made with wood. What happens? You have, by analogy, huh? we will always buy analogy, comparison. Huh? A carpenter or a joiner, huh? he arrives and he. he in front of many planks, huh? many planks. <coughs> you have wood, wood. But what happened? Somebody knocked at this at this, at this shop. He said, "I I need a table. I need a table. Give the dimension of the table." Another knock at this. I need uh, a desk. What the, the what the, the what will the carpenter do? He will put the idea of this, which is different from the idea of bed and table, he will put that into the wood. He will put the form, the determination. That in such a way, this wood will not be only wood, it will be a desk. This will be, not the wood, it will be a bed, huh? a table, a chair. So, all those things are matter, but they are different forms. So the matter is a principle of indetermination, principle of indetermination, and form is a principle of determination. But here there is a difficulty. When you speak about form, what do you think about first? Something spheric, no? Round or square or then or any kind of form, no? That is the first meaning we know. No? But in fact, a thing which is spheric or square or cubic or it is the form is the determination. Like the form of a desk is not the wood. It is the determination put into the wood. It is the perfection put into the wood. It is the idea put into the wood. It is the concept put into the wood. In such a way that that perfection, that idea, is determining this wood to be a desk and not a chair and not a bed and not a table. That theory, we call that highly morphism. Huh? Highly morphism. It is the, the, the foundation of the Aristotelian philosophy. From that, we arrive to many things. Something common, something determined. The form. So the form now is not spheric, is not cubic, is not. The form is a perfection, a determination. It is what makes a desk a desk. It's not the wood. Because I can have a desk in, in, in metal also, huh? aluminum. It is the form, the idea, huh? the determination. Now, you have a new concept. The concept of form for you, not forget that and think about that. An example. In baptism, what is the form? It is the matter of the sacrament of baptism. It is the form, the word, put into the water. I baptize you. But it is the form of sacrament of reconciliation. The matter of the confession of sin. The form is the absolution. But it is the form in the Eucharist. 
wet and uh, the, excuse me, the mother wet and dry, wet, uh, wine and bread. But here's the father, the word of the consecration and the epiclesis. Yeah? So now it is a good example. Uh, a good example, the what I told that I told to you last time. You will acquire a new vocabulary. That is clear here. Yeah. Matter is not brick. Matter is not cement. Matter is not uh, wood. Matter is any principle of indetermination. Material reality. Huh? Sand. Imagine sand they can with sand or today make computers. <laughs> Memorial computers, silicium. Silicium is sand. Hmm? So we put a determination into the matter. Okay? And that will be accompanied with another theory at the metaphysical level. It will be the, the, the principle of potency and act. Another example, act. For the majority of people, what is an act? Yeah, action, huh? Action, action, not action. What is the first act? in your life. You exist. Yes. <laughs> to exist. Ah, what is an act? An act is a determination. An act is a perfection of something in potency. That means, for example, huh, you are in potency to become deacon. When you are ordained deacon, you are in act of being deacon. But before we are in potency. That means the passage from potency to act is like the passage from matter to form. When the, the carpenter put into the wood the idea of desk, he is actualizing the desk, the wood. The wood is in potency to become many things. Huh? So we can write an, a, a, a ratio with that. We can see. Huh? The form is to the mother like the act is to potency. But we will come back on that in the future. But I am very happy that I have the opportunity to teach that now, to convince you that you are learning a new language. In many, many words. Look at the page, the page you will have. <laughs> Okay, um, so okay, now my, the, my knowledge comes to me, huh? but what I have first, I have an image of the, the dog of my grandfather, for example. I remember clearly the dog my, my uncle had when I was four or five years old. I go to the country and the dog was called Poppy. It was a black dog. I remember that 70 years and more, huh? very clearly. That is imagination. And when I situate that in the past, it is a memory. Huh? So <laughs> those things are, uh, are in my mind, but it is always the, this dark puppy, this barn of my uncle, you know. Now, from this experience of dark, of experience of barns, I can arrive to the concept of dark and the concept of barn. And that is the problem. How we can pass from the singular Huh? and material to the abstract and universal. That is the central question. And I will give you rapidly, using that page here, here the theory of Aristotle. Well, I, we will come back on that, but now already to have an idea on that. Huh? So I have here, from my imagination, I have become... Uh, well, first, when I see a thing for the first time, I have a sensible, impressed species or species. You know that the mean of sensible, able to be known by my senses. Impressed, why? The first time I saw a kangaroo, <coughs> I have the first image of kangaroo. It impressed my imagination. Okay? <coughs> a species that means image come from the verb speak as speech in Latin, aspect. Huh? 
to see. Huh? Spectacle. Huh? <laughs> Spectacle. To see. Hmm? So, E, a new meaning. Another word, species is not here fish or, or uh, no, species in the science, no? Here, species means image similitude. Mean likeness. And finally, when I express that, so I have <coughs> that is once for all. Once for all. When I have now the image of what is a kanguru, I can after that represent my kanguru. The kanguru I saw in the zoo, I can make it present to my mind. That when I represent that. I have a sensible <coughs> express species. <coughs> sensible, you know what, singular. Huh? Express why? I say that to myself. A puppy is not here. Your car is not here, but you can represent your car. No? Hmm? I can ask you what is the color of your car, what is the, you know, the dimension, etc. You can have yeah, that here. You can represent that. Huh? That representation, what is representation? It is to make something present now. Huh? Presentation. Now, to make present now. We call that phantasm. Another technical word. Another technical word. Phantasm is not. No. <laughs> Phantasm is the image you represent, you express in your own imagination. You can think about your vacation. Maybe during the summer you went to the beach or you went to the mountain. Huh? And now in class, now, instead of following my class, you see yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's more interesting than to talk about philosophy. <laughs> you have the phantasm. So phantasm is a technical word, word huh? technical word to express image, huh? likeness, similitude. But the technical word is phantasm, not F. PH, huh? PH. It's technical, huh? technical. So that is the summit of your sense knowledge. And your cat has that. Your cat, your dog, and every sentient being have that capacity of representing something. For example, the squirrel, when he's searching for nuts, he has a, a representation of nuts. Hmm? And you offer a stone, he will not accept the stone. Now, how I can pass from that sensible, which is singular, huh? singular, in time and space, and arrive to a concept, to an idea which is out of time and space. And here it is the genius of Aristotle. Okay, so I will explain that. Suppose there is my phantasm here, okay? The order of sensible, the order of the empiric. My phantasm is here. Okay? My phantasm is like a slide. And if ever you never saw a slide, I have a slide for you. <laughs> <laughs> because I know that for me, the other class, someone never saw a slide. Oh my God. Think about that, they never saw a slide. We are dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> so when we have a slide, if I have a slide, can now I can uh, 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 send the image on the board on the on the screen? No, I need a light. I need a light. So I need a light. I need a light. But if I have no slide. Can I send also something? 
I have the lamp, I have the projector, but I don't have slide, I don't have film, pellicle. I need... So, to pass from the singular and material reality to intellectual, huh, universal, we have to abstract. So, some philosopher like uh, uh, <coughs> Descartes and St. Augustine, they would find the solution in God. You see, it is God which, who, excuse me, God who illuminates my mind. But Aristotle, he said, no, I have the power to illuminate my mind, and that power comes from my intellect. I am intelligent. And because I am intelligent, I can find in material thing the, what is universal to everything. I can find in a cat and a cat in a cat the idea of what is a cat, the oneness, the quiddity of that. How we can do that? So Aristotle said our intellect has two power. I have a, I have an active intellect or agent intellect, and I have a passive intellect or patient intellect. Because my intellect is a power, but a power can have many, many uh, uh, capacities of doing something. For example, your hands. Your hands are, are there, but you can do many things with your hands. You can paint, you can play the music, uh, you can shake hands, or you can punch somebody. <laughs> but with your hands, you can many, 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 many things. No? It's incredible what we can do with our hands. Yeah, by the way, Father Reichman, when he wanted to arrive to, to discover that man is different from, he was the man ends. It's incredible what we can do with our hands. Incredible. So, with my, and my mind, I can do also two kinds of activity. My mind is able to find in the material thing, in the slide here, something which I will detach. I will detach from the dogs their quantity, their qu color. Uh, I will try to find what makes a dog a dog. If you want the definition of a dog, apply to any kind of dog. What, what I am doing, I am abstracting. So abstraction comes from, Aristotle said, the illumination of the slide, of the fantasy. My, my, my illumination does not come from God, it comes from my mind. My mind has the capacity to illuminate the fantasm and to detach, huh? detach, abstract. What is abstraction? Abstract, it is to detach. Even in science, huh? when we want to abstract salt from the, the water in the ocean, huh? abstract. Huh? The, we take from. Huh? From what is you uh, 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 detach huh? from every singularity is because of that universal. Huh? Universal. So we find in the slide, in the phantasm, what is universal. And to arrive to find something that is universal, we have to detach from sense and no more. We don't take care of the quantity, big or small dog. We don't take care of the quality, the color of the dog, and the form exterior of the dog. We arrive to find the whatness of the dog. So we arrive to an uh, intelligible, impressed species. Interesting. Analogy. We arrive to insight. That is the insight. The understanding. I understand. And a good example of that is Archimedes. No? The, he was floating, was in the, the pool. He was searching to verify if the crown of the king of Syracuse was made with pure gold. And suddenly, floating, he discovered the principle of hydrostatic. He has the first time in his life the idea of hydrostatic. 
He has an insight. He has an understanding. He, you know, I taught mathematics and uh, physics many years. <laughs> and I was able to see who understands and who does not understand. When they understand what happened, they smile. <laughs> And when they don't understand, <laughs> they don't smile. <laughs> that means when a student understands, he has the insight. And when he has the insight, it is for heaven. Remember, in the first grade, the teacher said, you see, I have two fingers. I have two fingers. If I put two fingers with two fingers, I have four fingers. If you understand that, it's for the rest of your life. It's not necessary to repeat that 1,000 times. It is for the rest. You have the end. You understand. Okay? Now you understand. And that is determining huh, your intellect. Passive intellect. In fact, at the same time, your intellect is active, but your intellect is receiving what you abstracted. Interesting. A good example of that is a computer, a portable computer. The computer is at the same time the one who produces and the one who receives. Unfortunately, Mr. Aristotle never heard about a computer. <laughs> <laughs> the computer is at the same time abstracting the, the image which it represents on the screen. So it is the computer who does the boat, boat. No? The computer is the same for my analogy for my intellect. My intellect at the same time is searching for the answer, huh? the, 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 the definition of a thing, the nature of a thing, and at the same time is receiving that on the screen. <laughs> on the screen. Huh? Yes? Uh, does the this uh, abstraction and universalization of the phantasm by the agent intellect. Mm -hmm. Does um, does Aristotle believe that the agent? How does the agent intellect get that ability? Is that something that's learned? Because you start as a baby and just recognizing something. But, like it is, you know, in fact, it does not believe the affirms. <laughs> and you know, it, we proceed by deduction here. If I can, I have idea. I have idea, abstract and universal. Here, in imagination, I don't have idea, abstract and universal. I have to find an explanation. Mm -hmm. And the explanation is, I can find that in God. God illuminates huh, my mind, or I can find that in my own mind. And Aristotle said, I, I, I have the power to do that. It is I who abstract from the dogs the idea of God. And not because I existed in another life like uh, the slave of uh, Plato. Huh? Huh? So that is, it is, you know, it, how do you say? We, we cannot have the, uh, we cannot have the, it is an, an explanation, an interpretation, and that interpretation is, for me, very satisfying. Because we have to find an explanation outside of you or within you. Outside of you, it is from God, but if you don't believe in God, <laughs> so we have no guarantee of the truth of your mind. But it is come, you have the power to do that. You have the power, but your knowledge is not coming from you. The knowledge is coming from the object. In, in the idealism, the knowledge comes from here. It comes from what? From my sense experience. So I have the power from my sense experience to universalize. I, I start from many experimentation. Finally, I arrive to a universal concept. And I do that by myself. So I can explain that. There is to find that solution. He said, it is my intellect has the power of abstraction. And because he has the power of abstraction, he has the power of universalization and a universal concept. So I arrived at the concept of cat, and I go everywhere in the world. I read a, a text in the time of Pharaoh. 
I see they are a pharaoh, have a cat, they denies the cat, they adore the cat, you know. Cat is cat everywhere. Huh? It is universal. But I, I cannot have the, I cannot uh, for, take the picture of that, you know. It is, it is an it interpretive philosophical explanation. We are in the level of meta. That means to know we need to think. We need the object and we need the subject. I don't think I asked my question properly. So my question really is, is does my ability to universalize and abstract increase as my knowledge increases? Exactly. In fact, you can develop that. It is wisdom. Huh? Yeah. It is a virtue. You know, we have moral virtue, but we have also intellectual virtue. Huh? We have wisdom, understanding, and science. And that three, you know, three uh, intellectual virtues, what is interesting, they correspond to three different Holy Spirit. <coughs> wisdom, understanding, and science. And that, yeah, intellectual virtue. That means we can develop abstraction. And now, at, at, at our age, at our age, we are younger, but at our age, <laughs> We can, uh, we can know better than when we were six years old. We have a power of abstraction which is more powerful than when we were ten years old. It's not we develop and uh, develop that. We develop understanding. You know why in the past it was very important to study Latin? Because Latin it was the best thing to prepare for mathematics. Because in Latin you analyze continually. A mind is a bit analyzed continually, is preparing for analyzing in mathematics. They go together. Like mathematics is, is, uh, is a good way to prepare to be a pilot, or to find solutions rapidly. You know? We develop, yes, we develop that capacity. Okay? And when you have that, okay. That intelligible, impressed intelligible species we have here, huh, here, for the first time, I understand what it is 3 plus 2 equals 5 for the rest of my life. I know that, I have the inside. Okay? Now I can use that anew. I can repeat that in my mind, and I have an intelligible, expressed species. Image, but express, and that is the concept. That is the idea, and that idea concept is expressed in logic through definition. Father, is that expressed or impressed? I don't have uh, what, what is the, the first difference between expressed and impressed? Yeah, impressed. It is the first you know, analogy. You have a color. You remember the old. Your father had that, maybe you, let, you had that when you were young. A connect with a film, huh? You remember that? Mm -hmm. well, the film, when you open the shutter, you open the lens, two. One impression. Yeah. Okay? After that, you develop. And you express, you see, you see, hey, look at that, huh? Express. By analogy, that expression of your thought is a concept. But the expression of your thought in your mind. In your mind. For example, I to, uh, Mr. Achilles, he went to the king. And the king, he said, you know, I understand now. It's the king said, yes, okay, explain me. But to explain to the king, he must be able to express to himself. You know, the way we study is exactly like that. We have to have the insight first. You have to understand the subject. After that, you have to express that to your own, yourself. And after, you meet with two, three friends, and you express that to the other. And now, the concept passes from within your mind, uh, outside in the world, and that is the word, uh, the word. The concept expressed outside of you, and you come back to the external world. We start from the external world, and we come back. And that operation is the same. For example, if I say dog, immediately you begin again. Dog, 
represent abstraction concept and at your turn you can explain to your grandchildren what is it <laughs> that is hmm, the way the process okay <coughs> well, we will come back on that but that is for uh, it is central huh? that the problem of philosophy is here 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 the central I will say the pivot, huh? the pivot, pivot of the philosophy. If you accept that, you are measured by reality, by nature. You don't transform nature, you don't deny nature, you are measured by nature, by the truth, by the object. What is truth? The conformity of my mind to the reality. Okay? If you don't accept that here, you have to search an explanation outside of you, God, or the unique power of your own mind, rationalism. And the consequence of that, uh, uh, relativism. You know? So here is excessively important. It's like the switch. When the train is coming from New Haven, there is a switch. Albany or Boston. Subjectivism. Objectivism or subjectivism. And that here, it is, of course, a kind of, uh, you know, it is not, it is not a evidence, direct evidence. It is true reasoning. Is the reason why some philosophers like Descartes, like Plato, like St. Augustine, they don't like that, they don't do that. They find their explanation in God or in their own reason, you know. But if we accept reality, we obey, and that here, because of that, we can have one idea of a thing. We can have majesty real. In fact, the best way for Catholic, for Christian, is to be realistic in philosophy. Otherwise, your truth and my truth. I am true with myself, you are true with yourself, and I am pro-abortion, you are pro-life. I am okay, you are okay. That is democracy. <laughs> democracy cannot exist in magisterium. Impossible. Democracy, the vice of democracy is that we cannot obtain a universal truth. Because the source of truth is in the number and not in the object, not in the reality. Five against four. Three versus one voice, one on 300 million people made a thing that or good. That is not conformed to the reality. It is conformed to their opinion, to their own truth. Each one is the source of truth. And we know the thing is good or not, not leaning on the reality, but leaning on the opinion of people. And, so, and by the way, Plato was totally opposed to democracy because of that. He said democracy is based on opinion. I think he was right. But it is the... We are not the Catholic Church. <laughs> and we cannot impose our way. Even if we are convinced abortion is evil, we cannot impose because we are in democracy. That is that interesting, maybe, to see how philosophy has implication in politics. And that, the source of that here is nominalism. Huh? Relativism comes from nominalism. Huh? That means for William of Ockham, huh? there is no universal concept, there is only name. The idea of cat does not exist. What exists is the name cat. And one philosopher exactly in the same line is John Dewey. Huh? John Dewey. Huh? The, I 
juste savez les mêmes philosophes et les et les pédagogues. Because it there is no there is universal concept. There is only what we we speak the same language. Cat, cat. But it's common. It is the word cat. But if you give a definition, strict. But in fact, it's not true because you go to the dictionary, you have a definition. We cannot live in the pure relativism. They say sometimes, "Oh, you are a relativist." Okay, I take your wallet. No, 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 no. Yes, your wallet is my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> your wallet is my wallet. <laughs> your car is my car. Why not? I am true. You know, it is my morality. No? It's good for me. They don't bother you. Capitalism is based on that. No? I would, if you follow with big class of social ethics, you will see. In fact, it comes from that. Good Franciscan, fantastic. He was the, pro, he was the provincial of the Franciscan of England. In fact, he put the foundation of Protestantism and relativism. Because he opposed universal concept. There is no universal concept. You know, when you study the history of the Middle Age, we have we call it the quarrel of universals. Sometimes people treat that as a as a joke. It was not a joke. It was very serious as the consequence of that. We pay now for that. In the Middle Age, when there was unanimity of concept, there was capacity between country to have respect of, the law of wars, for example. Because they have a universal magisterium. But when each one makes his own truth, Hitler makes his truth, Stalin makes his truth, all, the, the, all means are good after that. Huh? Okay, so I go um, now. The word I spoke about that. So now, how we can arrive to define thing? We define thing by we call the genus and specific difference. In fact, in everything we see that there is something common and something different. For example, the word, the concept, animal. When we speak about animal. To whom, to what, or to who do you think? A cat, a snake, a fish. But we can think also, man, we are animal. We are animal. So animal is genus. Huh? We are animal, which does not uh, reflect. Animal, we are intelligent and non-intelligent. And you have here, the, we, I give you the tree of Mr. Porphyry. Hmm? Porphyrian tree, where is it? Is in my forest. It is up here in my forest. <laughs> well, if you look at that, we start from the universal and we go to the particular. I would like to find it. I print that. Anyway, you have that in your, huh? I gave that to you. So we have the, the, uh, the top substance, huh? and we go like that. Huh? We precise more and more and more, and finally we have a definition. We have that, huh? that here. Huh? Okay. So we have a substance, material or immaterial. After we have the body, we yeah, animate or inanimate. You have body which have senses and don't, you don't have senses. For example, a flower has no senses. A cat has senses. And finally, you have those who are intelligent or non-intelligent. So what happens? The more you put detail, the more you precise. But that, when you precise the concept of a thing, the extension is diminishing. You understand that, huh? So we have the order of extension and the order of comprehension. Extension and comprehension. So the more we go with detail, the narrower is the extension. So we will see that soon when we study the uh, the week, the next next week. Huh? Okay. 
not the, the value of a definition. In fact, a definition is the case standard of knowledge. To know something is not enough to know the name. We have to know what it is. Huh? What it is. And to find what it is, or the quantity, or the nature of the essence of the thing, you have to define. What is the word define? Find in Latin, series means limitation. We have to delimit. The more we delimit, the more we precise. Huh? The more we precise. And the more, the, be the better is our reasoning. So, here we have a general idea of how we know. We will come back when we study philosophy of man. Huh? But it is, I think it's necessary to, uh, to have that idea to understand what will come after. Take a break for 15 minutes and we'll try to find some chalk. <laughs> <laughs> we have the idea of chalk, but we don't have the mother. <laughs>